So this episode covers some product reviews of things that I've been testing out over the past few weeks and also I rescued a little bat. First thing I wanted to show you is this amazing belt for your back. I have ordered this, um, my osteopath recommended it and I've had so many problems with my back. Uh, I just ended up having to go to A&E at the weekend because my disc bulged so badly. I couldn't walk pretty much. Um, it was just horrendously painful. I was bending over getting some hay uh, to put into my wheelbarrow to take out to the field. It wasn't even particularly heavy, but as I twisted sideways, the whole disc just went to the side. And I... So actually, I'd already ordered this because I've been to see my osteopath quite a lot the last few weeks for various things. And my sacroiliac was completely stuck the other day as well. So he freed that up. And then, yeah, a couple of days later, that was when I had this really bad disc problem. So I've had some very hardcore um, uh, drugs from A&E. So thank you very much for them to, for sorting me out. Because, um, yeah, it was a Saturday well spent just to get those... So muscle relaxants and things just to try and help my back. Mm. It's been bad for ages. I mean, if you watch my vlogs, I've been saying for months and months about how stiff my back is. Um, so yeah, anyway, I thought I'd show you this. I'm gonna try it out. It's meant to just help stabilize your lower back. So if you're picking things up and or riding, it should help keep things in place and stop things moving out and clicking out so easily. So yeah, I'm gonna try it and I'll let you know how it goes. So I've had my Sorola belt for, gosh, I think it must be like a month and a half, two months now. Um, I've had obviously this nerve issue down my arm. That has actually got a lot better. In the whole time that was going on, my lower back's been amazing. I felt, you know, really, really good with my lower back. Um, I don't know whether it's because I've cut down the amount of drugs I'm taking for my nerve issue in my arm, because I was on muscle relaxants and um, some nerve drugs for that. So whether that has obviously helped my lower back as well as a sort of byproduct of taking those, I don't know. Um, but the last few days since I jumped the other day, my lower back's been feeling bad again. So I thought um, I'd get my belt out and use it today for doing my hay because lifting the hay into the wheelbarrow is usually the thing that um, puts it out. Anyway, so I just thought while I had it out, I'd show you how it goes on. So that's the back of it. So you sort of line it up over your sort of uh, where your sacroiliac is here. Make sure it's in the middle. And then you just have to quite firmly wrap this around. And then you grab these two Velcro pieces and then that just wraps around the front so it's really really strong but it's actually very comfortable because it is stretchy so I haven't found it too restrictive when I've been out doing stuff in the field I have used it to ride in a couple of times before my shoulder went um, and it's, it's been okay. But I have to say, it does make a difference. So when you're lifting things, you do feel more supported. So I definitely give the Sorola belt a thumbs up if you are someone that experiences a lot of lower back problems. Um, I think it definitely seems to help with mechanical lifting and things like that. So yeah, give it a go. It wasn't stupidly expensive. I think it was about 35 pounds off the top of my head. I can't remember now, but anyway, yeah, try it out. So this next product, the Bosch Pump, is probably the best thing I've ever bought for my field. Hey, so, excuse my voice, because I don't know what's wrong with me, but I'm losing my voice for some reason. But I have just had a super exciting delivery. So I have been lugging buckets of water backwards and forwards from the trough to the bucket to the other side of my post and rail all winter which I think is probably what has made my back so bad. And uh, I've been looking for a way to be able to move the water more easily across the field. And I put a post on one of the Facebook groups that I'm in for horses, it's called Horses Living Out, with a little drawing on a photo of how, I, well, where I needed to get water across from the trough. Um, and a lovely lady on there sent me a video of this little setup that she had which is this and it's a submersible pump so this 
end would go in the trough and then you attach a hose onto this bit here and then you've got a Bosch battery so it's the same battery as would go on a drill um, or you know any of their power tools so I had to buy the battery and the charger separately because I don't have any Bosch power tools but looks like I'm going to be using Bosch things if I need to get a new drill or anything there um, but yeah so you charge this up and pop the battery onto the charger point here and then attach your hose and it pumps the water for you and she reckons the hose she's got on hers is 50 meters long so it should work really really well so i'm really excited i'm gonna try it out later my husband reckons he's got some old hose that we can put together to um link between my field and the next bit of my field i need to get it to so i'll let you know how it goes and do a little demo but yeah super excited it was quite expensive but i you know i've got to a point with my back i've really got to give in and realize that i just can't lift and do everything like i used to be able to so this is going to be saving a lot of pain and hopefully osteopath trips and things so yeah i'm going to go charge the battery up now I don't know if it's charged or not, but anyway, see if it's charged, put it on charge if not, and then we're going to try it out. So I um, just checked the uh, paper leaflet inside with the battery, and it says they are supplied partially charged, but to get the best out of the battery to fully charge it before you use it. So um, I'm in the middle of doing some Lego designs and some other work for Hempine at the moment, so I'm going to um, do those bits and leave it on charge while I do that, and then hopefully it will be fully charged by the time we go up to the field later. <laughs> so my husband's just um, unreeled the hose. So that's stretching all the way down to that red bucket down there is where the trough is. So I would say that's a pretty good, <laughs> that's really impressive actually. I'm well chuffed with that. Show you the other end of it. I think this length is about, it's probably about 50 metres, might even be a bit more, I'm not sure because my husband's attached two hoses together I think, just that we had lying around at home. So sorry for my husky voice still as well, I don't know what is going on, um, <clears throat> but um, yeah just to show you the little mechanism, so just got this it hung on the fence so that is the drill battery inside there with your green light to tell you how much power is there you can set a timer on it as well so that you don't flood it if you forget and then this thing just tips in touch the hose and that's it so um it's pretty cool <laughs> i'm really chuffed i mean it's going to save so much back breaking work carrying buckets of water for four horses from that trough to these buckets so yeah great investment so i um wish i'd bought this hose thing before because i've just gone and checked the water buckets over there now we've got extra water buckets they've hardly drunk anything um so um yeah i don't even have to fill it up this morning and get the hose pump attached over there i've just can leave it um and my husband has put the hay in the barrow for me last night so i don't have to lift it with my um, arm problem that i've got at the moment um which is affecting my voice as well in case you wondered why i can't speak um i think this nerve damage in my neck is actually affecting my vocal cords now because it's all in the same area so um <laughs> yeah i sound a bit weird anyway um yeah so what a time saver i can't believe it it's I could literally like whip up and do all four horses, feed hay and water in like 10 minutes now. <laughs> so yeah, what a great investment. So if you are squeamish about bats, I would recommend just fast forwarding this next little section. Um, so we just come home from seeing our friends, um, went out for a meal and um, there's a little bat that was on our doorstep. It was on our doormat, actually. Um, it can't really fly. He's in here. So I'm going to try and... Tra He's had a little climb up my jumper. And I'm going to try and transfer him into this shoebox. 
with some water because apparently that's what you should do and then in the morning I'm going to try and phone a back conservation place but anyway this is all that um, so yeah I'm not sure if he's damaged his wing or what's wrong with him but anyway hopefully I can get him somewhere tomorrow where he can get the help he needs um, so yes, never a dull moment. Well, it's the morning. <clears throat> he looks like he's still alive. He's upside down asleep, hanging on. So, I am just about to take the lovely little bat to a lady called Sue, who I phoned the bat, I think they're called the bat trust or something. Anyway, they gave me the number of a few people to try who are bat experts. And she is going to take our little bat and check him over. And then if he's okay, he can come back and be released in a few days, I think. But he might just need some antibiotics or something. Yeah, there he is. Or she, maybe a she. Sleeping. Right, so I'm just going to take the water out so that we don't spill that on our journey. And then, yes, that's hopefully going to keep him in. Um, I just put some sellotape on the side of that box just to. Apparently, they can get through very, very small gaps. So I'm just going to sellotape the sides, I think, to make sure he doesn't pop out through these sides. And then we're going to get going. So very sadly, the poor bat had apparently been attacked by a cat and he had a broken wing and some tears in the uh, skin over his very fine little bones in his wings. Um, so that was a real shame. He had to be put down, which was really sad. He was actually a whiskered bat, which is not particularly common either. So it's a real shame. Moving on from that very sad event, the next section is about fly rugs and just looking at some of the lotions and potions I've been trying out to stop Elf rubbing his mane out. So yeah, these are the sort of things that my horses like to do. Um, Elf has managed to, I mean, he'd already ripped the front here, so this was a little bit torn yesterday, but overnight he's managed to, um, to do this and make himself a nice uh, sort of hobble out of the binding where he's managed to wrap it around his foot. What an idiot. So I'd better sort that out. I just thought I'd show you this. This is a fly trap that I bought last year. I think I got it on Amazon. Um, they come in a pack of two and they have a little sachet of powder that you just add some water to, to put inside it. Um, so I've actually, because I'm a cheapskate, <laughs> I've just done the gross job of um, unscrewing that because it was completely full of dead flies up to the top and there wasn't actually any more room for any more to go in. So I have unscrewed it, put my um, jumper neck or well, my uh, polo shirt neck over my nose. Um, I'd be a bit mad if I was wearing a jumper in this weather, it's boiling. Um, and yeah, just gone and like slopped it out on my muck heap and then I've topped it up with some fresh water. So as you can see, the flies just love it. I think the rotting dead flies inside it attract them. Um, and once you've got it going, it is amazing. Like literally hundreds and hundreds of flies go in there every day. So yeah, I'd really recommend them. Have a look on Amazon for them, I think. And um, you can maybe get them at other DIY shops and stuff. <clears throat> but yeah, and you can reuse it as well if you want to top up with your own disgusting concoction inside. I would say if you didn't have any uh, more dead flies to add to it, then maybe you could put some a bit of uh, raw meat or something in there just to get it going. So yeah, it's disgusting, but it really works and it does keep the flies away from the horses. So yeah, good tip. I just wanted to show you these rugs that I bought from Barnstaple Equestrian uh, online. They were in these bags, so they are Gallop. Gallop fly rugs. Um, and they were only 19.99 each. So um, the flies have been so bad this year, I thought I'm gonna get one for my forester Lulu. So this is little Lulu. Uh, and I bought one for Strelly, who is here. Strelly, do you want to show everybody your lovely rug? 
So um, they're a really good fit. I'm actually really impressed with the quality for the price. We've got this lovely belly flap, which has got lots of Velcro here, so you can really make sure it's a nice close fit underneath. Um, the only thing I would say for Lulu, the legs, the surcingles were so short, um, trying to put them under her little legs, she had a bit of a wedgie. Um, and I thought, oh, I'll add some baler twine to each side. And then I thought, oh no, don't be sick, just uh, use one of them. So I've taken the other one off, just in that bucket there. Um, so yeah, taken it off and um, just using it as a as a um, fillet string instead. So that's fine. Um, because this uh, belly strap is so nicely fitted, it's not gonna move anywhere anyway. Um, and it seems to have a nice soft, it's got a nice soft bit here on there with her so it doesn't get too tight and plenty of space in the neck. So um, I'm gonna keep a bit of an eye on them because I don't want their manes to get rubbed out, especially Estrella, because she's got a beautiful long mane. Um, so I'm gonna keep a bit of an eye on her, but I mean, look, for 20 quid, what a bargain. They really do seem nice quality. Wally, can we not shadow chase, please? Thank you. So um, yeah, see how they get on over the next few days with them. But um, yeah, look, look, they are really, really, quite nicely made so yeah check out Barnstable Equestrian um, yeah quickly before I go as well I was gonna say these are the two products I've been using a lot recently um, I've just been putting a little bit of this in Lulu's ears because she was she gets really bothered by the midges and um, I don't like to leave their fly masks on overnight so I always give her a little squirt of this in her ears so this is from Hedgewitch um, it's not a company I'd heard of before but they do this Soothe and Repair Gel as well, which is brilliant. It's like a kind of blue, let's see if I can get the lid off with one hand, hang on. Um, so yeah, it's like a blue soothing gel. And poor Lulu, I didn't quite realize that um, when the summer sort of midges started, I wasn't quite quick enough to be putting her fly mask on and she was getting really, really bothered by the midges. So I've been using those two things. So they, the scabs went literally within a few days using that, um, what was it? Soothe and Repair, is it? Yeah, Soothe and Repair Gel. So that's also from he Hedge Witch and it's got lots of nice soothing ingredients. Um, and then yeah, just a little squirt of that at night. So it's quite um, economical doing that. Here's the shelf, yes. Elfie's not a big fan of fly spray, are you? No, I don't like it. Oh, you like it today? Because I've got a film. I'm filming, of course. Whenever I've got a camera out, Elfie's got to be involved because that is just what this boy is like. And you, yes, you too. Right, okay. Hay time, fly spray time, home time to mummy. So another one that I've just been using uh, for Elf, which is good. This smells so nice. It's like vitamin E um, and I don't know if it's got silicon in it or not. It doesn't really. Cyclomethicone and dimethicone. Uh, I don't think any of those are silicon. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. But anyway, um, he has been rubbing his mane. So I have real problems with his mane. It's just he, I don't know, whatever I put on it, if I leave him naked, if I put a neck rug on him, if I put a special neck rug on him with a domed neck, it still seems to rub. And then he's been rubbing his tail a bit. So I don't think he's got actual sweet itch, but I just, he seems to rub his mane and tail. Um, so I just am trying to be a bit more on top of moisturizing them. And he does seem to really like this one. He lets me put it on really easily. And it does look like it's starting to grow back a bit. So. Um, yeah, but anyway, my friend Lisa bought me that as a present, which was really kind of her, so um, I'm not sure where you get it from. I will have to look it up because I'm about halfway through the bottle now. So, yeah. Exciting times, I got a new trough. Elfie's trying to push it over. I've, there's lots of ants have got in it overnight because I had to put it empty overnight because I dropped it off really late from my friend's place. Oh, Elfie, that wasn't very nice. Um, so yes, I'm just gonna try and squirt some water in and get the ants out first before I fill it up, which is why it's what it's end. And the horses are very interested in it. But anyway, yes, this is gonna make my life a lot easier because I can use my special pump to fill it right up and hopefully it means I only have to do the refilling every day or two rather than having to do it once or twice a day. So I've already got my little, um, unit hanging on the fence there. So I'm going to connect it, give it a spray out, chuck it under the fence and then fill it up. 
right, so it's uh, got the hose on now. The pump is pumping it from down at the other trough there. And um, yeah, I, honestly, I can't tell you how pleased I am with this. Um, I got it from a friend of mine. Very sadly, she lost her husband recently and is having to downsize her horses and move from her lovely stud farm, which is um, very sad for her because it was a lovely place. But anyway, that's where I got the trough from. Um, I couldn't afford to buy a new one, so I'm really glad um, and well thankful that she uh, let me buy it from her at a sensible price. So, um, yeah, this is going to make it much easier. And when we go away on the odd trips away, it means I don't have to lug, well, bother someone else with having to lug loads of water around or set the pump up because that should definitely last for a weekend. Um, and then, you know, it just should hopefully be topping up every few days. So. Um, yeah, I've put all the old water from buckets in there as well, so we didn't waste any water. So hopefully, um, yeah, it's only taken not very long to fill up that far. So I reckon give it another sort of 10, 15 minutes. It probably should be full as long as my battery doesn't give out. So yeah, anyway, going to go feed the horses now because it's breakfast time. Isn't it? Breakfast time, Jenny. Breakfast time. Yes. Me to sell. You're so pretty. Uh, just to show you how good the pump is, I have just gone and done the horse's feeds, which takes me, I don't know, five, ten minutes to just uh, add all the supplements and bits and pieces in. Um, and look, it's nearly full. Pretty good. So, yeah, I'm just going to leave it a few more minutes. I just checked the battery and it was still on green, so it's got plenty of life left, so we should be able to fill it right up to the top. Really, really happy. I uh, can't tell you how happy I am to be able to have a lovely trough and a proper pump to fill it with. It's gonna make my back issues so much easier. I have come down to the yard this morning and um, last night when I left, this rug had a neck on it. So somehow, Elf has very cleverly managed to completely remove the neck of this rug, um, which he does need because he does get affected by the insect bites along his mane and then he rubs on the oak trees. So a bit annoying, I haven't gone and found it yet. Um, but yes, here we go. So he's, it's taken it off very neatly, I must say. I mean, it literally looks like a seamstress has done it. So well done for that, Elfie. So because Elf is so destructive, I decided to buy another rug as well so that I can cycle them around when they need repairing and saw this one by Awesome Equine. Really excited, um, this has turned up. This is Elf's new Sweet Itch rug. Um, he hasn't got Sweet Itch, but it's a Sweet Itch rug because I'm trying to stop him from rubbing his mane on the oak trees because he just likes to rub part of his mane off. Very annoying. So I saw this, this is a lovely lady who's got a um, very small business and uh, it's a great price, so I'm trying it out. Hopefully it's gonna last better than the big brand name ones that I've had. So we'll see how we go. Right, so I've just got this rug out and I am going to try and put it on. Mr. Alfie, what do you think of this, Elf? You're gonna look like Silver Spaceman, David Bowie style. Mm. So, I'm really, really happy with the fit of this. I like the design around his head because hopefully it's gonna keep it on his ears better. And it's not as tight as some of the other ones I've had that are, have got ear holes. So, um, you know, he's got a nice Spaceman look going on. I don't know how he's gonna feel about that, but anyway, it's nice and silky. Um, and I'm very surprised that actually the belly flap is a really, really good shape on him. It's not too loose because quite often, um, if you film the belly flap down there, that's, this can be very loose on him, um, but it's actually pretty good. So really, really happy with the fit. Great rug, um, definitely recommend it. A few weeks of hard testing later. So I thought I'd do a little catch up on the fly rug trials. And so this one from Awesome Equine, I really like this. I think um, it's my favorite out of all my fly rugs, mainly because I know it's not the traditional net material, but it is very lightweight still. He doesn't hasn't got too hot in it at all because um, it is quite a nice thin rug. And where it's so reflective, I think the heat, you know, it, it just reflects the heat off really nicely. So that's really good. Um, He's been rubbing his bum a lot on the fence because he rubs his tail. That has been fine. Like you can see the fabric is tiny, a tiny bit, you know, it's gone a little bit kind of um, bobbly, but he has been literally sitting on the fence virtually and rubbing his bum for ages at a time. So, you know, uh, I think anything that can stand up to that is blooming good. And the only other um, tiny issue I had was he must've got his ear, the hole around his one of his ears caught 
and he's just lost the little bit of um, like the little ring of binding that sits around the ear hole, a uh, bit like the blue bits around the edge of the ear hole on his fly mask. So just that little bit has come off. So all I've got to do is sew it back on. But the actual ear hole itself is fine; it's all working. Um, so yeah, very impressed with that. Um, and just to look at the Barnstable Equine ones that I bought, um, they were. Or Barnstable Saddlery, can't remember the name of the company now, something like that. Down in Barnstable in Devon, anyway. Um, and these were the 20 quid ones that I got, which were, I can't actually remember the brands now. Oh, Gallop. Gallop Equestrian. So these were 20 quid each. I just bought them when it was super hot and there were loads of flies. They've lasted pretty well, you know, for the amount, for the cost they were. Um, Estrella's got a massive hole where Elf has obviously told her off at some point because that's definitely a bite. Chunky chunk. Um, but yeah, no, the rest of it's all fine. Um, the fit is a little bit odd on the shoulders. Not see anything I would say on them, but you know, it's fine. For what it is, they're not going to be wearing them for long. It's just for a few months in the summer when it's really at its worst with the flies. Um, and then, just for clarity, here is Atia, and she's in her Weatherbeast one. This is an old rug. I've had this for a couple of years. Um, Atia is very good with her fly rugs. She's a very easy horse in terms of rugs she doesn't rub she doesn't have fights she doesn't like get caught on the barbed wire being annoying fighting with horses over the fence or anything so she is a lot easier on her stuff but this has lasted very impressively well considering so i would say it's probably yeah a couple of years old um but you can see the the only thing that's happened with this is the these have lost their elasticity and got a bit droopy but you yeah, know that's fine still fits her so yeah, so there we go, fly rug trial. So I really hope you enjoyed watching those product reviews and they were helpful. Look forward to catching up with you next time. Bye.